This is John Callahan with Michigan Pool News, and I have the pleasure of having our old friend Todd Lyons, who's now the regional sales manager for H2 Flow, on the line with me here. Todd, are you there? Hey, John. How are you doing? Thanks for having me back. Hey. Glad to have you. <laughs> um, so today we're specifically talking about energy savings. So obviously the uh, H2 Flow products fit in uh, quite well to that. And we know that we've uh, talked about VFDs a lot on the website over the last year here. But everybody's still looking at it from a financial standpoint of how can they afford it. So what I want to kind of grill you on today is now in your new role of traveling around the, uh, the middle part of the country here, um, how are you seeing people paying for these projects? Now, you mentioned a few things earlier, so I'm just going to uh, mention the topics, and you can kind of just talk to how people are paying for them and give us some examples if you can. And first mm -hmm. one you mentioned was uh, bond money. So who's, yep. how is that working out? How are people paying for it with bond money? Uh, that's kind of a straightforward one. Um, for instance, here in the state, there's a couple of schools that had some leftover bond money from you know, years past. Um, they were able to save a little bit and had it left in, the, in their account, so to speak. And basically, as they're looking at other things to improve, obviously the, you know, the drives have come across and uh, the pool sections, you know, because knowing that the pools are the most expensive thing to run in the district, that they decided to look at that. And um, it turned out on some of the applications, it worked out well that uh, there was a significant payback. And so in turn, they went and used the bond money to, um, to finance the projects. I've seen that in Michigan, and I've seen a little bit up in Wisconsin recently as well. I and mean, I'll be referring to Wisconsin a number of times here as, as we go forward. <laughs> OK. Um, how about as far as any uh, people that are just purely financing it and leasing uh, the systems. How, how common are, is that for you? What are you seeing there? You know, it's interesting that in talking about that, John, we, um, you know, some of the schools won't do that. I mean, it's kind of taboo or just whatever reasons they have it, that they're now not allowed to do any type of leasing or financing. What we're seeing, though, is with some of the YMCAs and some of the private industry that they're taking advantage of it. Um, and to give you an example, we just had one recently that there was a YMCA. They were spending, you know, they were going to save like six, seven thousand dollars a year on the drive to lease the drives. It was going to run them basically three, four hundred bucks a month. So for for twenty four months, so you know, it's a lease to own, and it was kind of a no brainer. And you know, and, and that's the thing. It's between the financing and leasing or what have you, there's a lot of different options out there with low rates. Um, at the end of the day, I mean, I know that with the financial market being the way it is, um, this isn't like qualifying for a home or nothing like that. Um, there's some money to be had out there to, uh, to definitely retrofit or renovate your facility. So that was a couple that we've seen. Okay. Hmm. How about as far as what you're seeing in the other states or here in Michigan concerning energy rebates or grants that people are using? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of interesting ones. Up in Wisconsin, for instance, uh, the deadline is like March 31st to the local energy company up there, and you don't even have to apply for the, the, uh, the, the, the energy rebate. You just have to submit your invoice, and you'll get paid on it. And I believe it's anywhere from 40 to $60 a horsepower. Um, similar in Tennessee, you know, they have certain grants out there or, or rebates. Those you do have to apply for. Um, Ohio, the Department of Energy down there has come up with a finance program, a low interest finance program to help uh, facilitate and you know, basically get everybody up to speed or you know, energy efficient, if you will. And here in the state here, uh, we do have some of the, the rebates available through DTE and whatnot. Those are the kind of the stand in line and see if you can get your hands on it, kind of icing on the cake. So it just varies from town to town and from state to state. Um, but then at the day, though, I mean, those, they're out there because the energy, some of the information that I've read, depending on energy companies and what state, they have certain goals and standards that they have to hit by 2015 because if they can only produce so much energy right now, electricity, and they need the end user to become more efficient, especially as the populations have increased, they just can't keep up. So they have to do it. And there's more and there's stuff going out west in California and stuff that where they're, they're almost making it mandatory, but I'm, I'm digressing there. So, But there's definitely out there, um, you just have to see what your local contractor, if you will, and um, see what is available. Okay. 
How about as far as people that are just basically reshuffling their budgets, taking things that yeah. were planned for one bucket, bucket in their budget and moving it around? That's uh, another common one seen that uh, they realized up in Wisconsin, talked to the director of one of the high schools up there. Uh, you know, he was saving a tremendous amount of money, and he's like, you know what, I really don't have it in my pool budget, but you know what, I can take it out of my either my HVAC budget or this budget, and they're just reshuffling the money. I mean, at the end of the day, he says it comes out of the same, the same, same pot of money. It just, as he kind of described, it's the pain in the butt to have to go back to the board to explain why he's taking this money for this, and he just. Because at the end of the day, he goes, you have to spend money to save money. And in understanding that his facility is where he's at, I mean, and that's another thing, too. A lot of these facilities from, you know, small private health clubs to entire towns. I mean, I've seen the one town in Tennessee that the whole community is doing a Going Green initiative, and everybody in the respective department is taking a look at what they can do to reduce their energy consumption. You know, from your lighting to your windows to your heating and to, you know, obviously the drive. So, and at the end of the day, they're seeing what they have and then, okay, how much is it going to cost to invest and where can we draw the money out of? And, you know, if we save some money on here. And interesting enough, up in Wisconsin, the gentleman brought up, too, that uh, it's been a mild winter, so his plowing costs have been down dramatically. He hasn't used a lot of the money for, to plow snow, so he's able to take some money out of there. So I mean, it's just kind of getting creative about yeah. how you move things around. Yeah, I mean, and it's, I mean, that's the thing too. You know, we've talked to a number of different people, and and, and it's, you know, from state to state, it, oh, we don't have money, we don't have money, and at the end of the day, sure, you may not have the money, but how can you continue to afford to let thousands of dollars go out the window and not uh and not take a look at it? Okay, Todd, those are some great examples of how people have been uh, paying for their project and reallocating budgets and, and whatnot. Um, can you give me just a, an example or two of some projects that you've been involved in where they really had to dive into the details and figure out how in the world are they going to pay for this and what they've run into? Yeah, probably one of the most interesting ones is down in Ohio. It's the city of Westerville, I believe it is. And the gentleman has a, they have a wonderful rec center, the municipality does, I mean, a huge rec center. And building's about 10, 12 years old now, and as the director down there had stated, you know, it's it's time to upgrade, I mean, because he knows that it's costing him a ton of money to, you know, heat and to run electricity and do everything, you know, from the lighting to the drives and the pool. I mean, they have uh, multiple bodies of water. But it was interesting in his comments because he's one of the few people that I've met that really understood and had a grasp on what he was paying for his uh, pool pumps. He had each of his, I believe there was nine pumps, ten pumps, and he had everything listed out, horsepower, but he knew down to the, I think they figured out his kilowatt usage for each of the pumps and what his corresponding cost was. Hmm. And, and in doing that, I mean, he was doing the same mentalities for his lighting and everything, and he admitted it was, it was it's a huge undertaking, um, but he said if he wasn't doing that, then he wasn't doing his job. And you know, at the time he does all the research, gets all the AFCO information, presents it to the board. The board's going to vote this, that, and the other. Um, you know, it's going to take him about a year to do all this. And this is a huge facility, and he just started working on it. Um, you no know, time to go through the processes and whatnot. But uh, it was interesting that the very few people like that really have a grasp on what they're paying for their facility, and but just to have the ambition to understand or to, to say, hey, you know, if I'm not doing this, I'm not doing my job. Um, it says a lot. It really does. Yeah, and then and finally, one other interesting um, projects we've seen was the uh, Naval Academy in Virginia. They're going around their bases down there and basically doing an energy efficiency on buildings and and whatnot. Anything that uh, can be upgraded. The here the good old governments down there, the, or the Naval Academies down there, um, doing their end as well. So it kind of it's interesting the the range from Again, small little health clubs to you have a naval academy and naval bases that are sitting there trying to uh, become energy efficient. You know, at the end of the day, for the pool portion, it takes 15, 20 minutes to really figure out what you have. Again, not everybody's, not every pump, pool pump is going to be a candidate, but <clears throat> at least you did your homework and you take the few minutes to do it, and then you can scratch it off your list. So, right. 
Okay, well, Todd, I appreciate your time. And, um, and these it's always John, likewise. Good, some good examples of things going on around the area here, and I think it benefits everybody to hear what people in different parts of the country are doing to save money because that's kind of number one topic for everybody these days.